church and uh, take a songbook. Let's warm up by singing a little bit, all right? Turn over, if you will, to 322, where you find it, Stand Up for Jesus, all right? So let's stand together to sing. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, 322. Brother Bob. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, ye soldiers of the cross. Lift high his royal banner, it must not suffer long. From victory unto victory, his army shall he lead. Till every foe is vanquished, and Christ is Lord indeed. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, the trumpet call obey. For to the mighty conflict in this his glorious day, ye that are men now serve them against a numbered foes. Let courage rise danger and strength to strength oppose. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, the trumpet call obey. The arm of flesh will fail you, ye dare. Put on the full armor and watching cause or danger be never wanting still. All right, good singing, and again, thanks for being here tonight. Let's have a word of prayer together. Shall we, Father, we bow before you, and we thank you for another midweek service that you brought us to, and uh, Lord, thank you for your faithfulness to us and your goodness to us. Thank you for the health and the strength we have that we can be here this evening. We do pray for those unable to be with us tonight, and that are not feeling well, and I pray that you would put your healing hand upon them and raise them up to be back with us by the Lord's day. Now, Father, we bow before you here at the beginning of the service. We ask you to speak to our hearts this evening. Uh, give us what we need tonight, Lord. You know what it is that we need, and I pray that you would honor and, and bless the singing that we have, that it would be a blessing to you as we sing with grace in our hearts to the Lord. I pray you bless our fellowship together, our prayer time. And then, Lord, uh, bless and honor the, the teaching of the Word of God tonight, and may each of us be yielded to what you want to say to each of us tonight, and may your will be done in each of our lives. And we'll thank you for it. I do pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. You may be seated. Well, let's go to number 141. 141, it came upon a midnight clear, that glorious song of old. We're going to sing that first and last sing it together. On that first, it came upon a midnight clear, that glorious song of old, from angels bending near the earth to touch their harps of gold. Peace on the earth, goodwill to men from heaven. King, the world in solemn stillness lay to hear the angels sing. For lo, the days are hastening on by prophet but foretold when we the ever circling years comes round the age of gold when peace shall over all the earth its ancient splendors fling and the whole world give back a song which now the
All right. Get your prayer guide out if you would. Anybody need one? If you need one, get your hand up. The usher will get it to you. Everybody set? There you go. All right. And uh, coming events, we uh, pray for the CRC inside with the RU inside down there tomorrow night. Uh, the Reformers Unanimous here on Friday night from 7 to 9 p.m. Uh, they'll be at London Saturday morning yet. We'll be caroling Saturday morning. Uh, we'll leave the church at 10 a.m., all right? Uh, we'll have a pretty tight schedule to keep because we've got to get choir members back here uh, by about 11.30 because they have a noon practice, and so we have to make sure that we're on time for them. And then don't forget Sunday services with uh, normal service Sunday morning, 9.30, 10.30, 6 o'clock Sunday night for the Hope of Christmas, the cantata. And then on Christmas Sunday, we'll not have Sunday school. We'll have morning service, 1030, and the evening service moved up an hour to 530. Uh, on January 1, we will have Sunday school, 930, church, 1030. Evening service on Sunday night, January 1, will be 530 as well. We'll have the service. We'll give you the theme. We'll give out the calendars, and uh, we'll do the year in review and things like that. But we're going to have some. Uh, refreshments and things to eat afterwards all right that's why we're moving that up to 5 30 on january 1 as well and uh so we'll we'll tell you more about that as we get closer to it uh with the uh with the revealing of the theme and everything on january 1 all right and uh on the inside there if you would we praise the lord for the good report with the ru inside both at crc and at london a uh, good group of men out and uh, several saved in both places there. One saved Thursday night, four on Saturday, and uh, great time there. And uh, Alan for his profession of faith and baptism on Sunday and the good attendance both morning and evening on Sunday. It was a great day uh, in the house of the Lord. Now, under your health there, would you add a couple requests that I've been handed tonight? I want to uh, pray for Butch Wallace. Butch Wallace. That's Bob's nephew. He's having a heart catheterization in the morning. You know, he would have been very anxious about that. And so uh, pray for him and just pray for his spiritual condition as well, if you would. And then also um, pray for Steve Harris. Steve Harris, this is a friend of the Lindermans. He lost his eyesight in an accident. Uh, it says he has no sight. He already has no sight in his right eye, and now it's left eye as well. So he could be completely blind. So pray for this man, Steve Harris. And then uh, pray for Jeanette Osman. Uh, most of you know Jeanette, um, Brother Talladay's aunt. Uh, she fell on um, yesterday, and uh, she broke or fractured a bone or a hip right right near that area there. They, she's in surgery right now, probably. She went in about, was supposed to go in about six for surgery, and uh, they're putting a pin in her. And uh, she's 93 years young. So uh, pray, for, pray for Jeanette and for her recovery. Would you please? She's at Mount Carmel West uh, Hospital. Okay, so add Jeanette on your list if you would as well. All right. And then we continue to pray for these in authority, and we pray, of course, for our... Uh, military personnel and as they serve our country and then pray for these who battle cancer and then pray for these on the salvation list and of course the unreached people groups and uh, God will raise up laborers to go and reach these folks for the Lord and then our missionaries uh, highlighted by the McQueries tonight and of course their report when they were in uh, the restricted country that they you heard about and um Continue to pray for God to use them in the trips that are upcoming uh, here in 2017 and for the recovery for Bob for the medical procedures that he's having done that all that will go well so that he'll be healthy and uh, ready to travel uh, in 2017. All right. And uh, Brother Moreland, why don't you come up and lead us in our prayer tonight, if you would, please. Good. To, always good to have the Morelands. They have purchased their tickets for Armenia, and uh, I believe it's April 11th. Is that correct? April 11th, and uh, it'll be, uh, they'll be in the process of, you, 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 most of us will never know what that's like, to have to get everything, you know, think about moving, and you know, most of us have moved before, and you put everything in a truck, but it's a little different when you're going <laughs> to another part of the world, and uh, everything you've got to fit has to get in some kind of a container that goes on an airplane. 
and uh, that's that's you got to choose what you're going to take and what to leave behind. And so pray for the Morelands as they make that transition over these next few months, and uh, we'll be praying for God to take care of them. All right, Brother Ron will lead us in prayer audibly. Pray with him silently as he leads us tonight. All right. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you and for allowing us to come before your throne this evening, Lord, and being in your house. Lord, we ask that you'll be with us tonight as we worship you, and Lord, we try to give you full glory. Lord, we ask that you be with the preacher tonight as he preaches your word, and be with the music, Lord, as we sing and worship to you. Lord, tonight, Lord, we ask you to be with those um, that are having problems with their health, Lord, we ask that you still be with uh, Paula Ross, Lord, that you'll raise her up, Lord, and uh, hopefully get her home quickly, and uh, Lord, we know she's been in the, the hospital for so long, and and um, now she's in the, in the in the care units, and Lord, we just ask that you'll just be with her, and be with Ronnie, and, and uh, her dad, Lord. Lord, we ask that you be with uh, Jeanette, as uh, she's in surgery right now, Lord, we ask that you'll give the doctors wisdom, with uh, and uh, a good eye and a good hand, Lord, uh, be able to put this pen into her hip, Lord, and just be able to heal her and heal her quickly. Lord, she's 93 years young, and Lord, she just keeps on going. In fact, she's an inspiration to all of us, Lord, and I just ask that you'll just uh, raise her up quickly. Please be with uh, Butch Wallace, Lord, as he goes in for his heart cath tomorrow. Be with uh, Steve Harris, Lord, with his eyesight, Lord. I just ask that you'll give the doctors wisdom, and Lord, somehow that they'll just see who you are and what's going on, Lord, and just give you praise through all this. Lord, we ask that you'll be with the ministries of this church. Lord, there's so many things that are going on, and there's still a lost world out there. Lord, I ask that you'll help us and give us a heart to go out and just share the gospel with them, Lord, and let them see who you are. Lord, I do give you praise and glory, and I thank you for everything that you're doing with the RU ministries, within the prisons, within this church, right, and outside these walls. Lord, what a great, great program, Lord, that we can see that we don't need anything. We just can have full dependence on you and be able to be um, over sin. Lord, we um, ask that you'll be with our, um, our government. Lord, be with our president. And his family, Lord, be with our president-elect and his family, Lord. We just pray for them all that they'll, um, they'll come to you. And, Lord, I ask that you'll give, um, um, give them wisdom to be able to lead our country into such a way that they're looking after the people, Lord, and that they'll give us safety. Lord, I ask that you'll be with those with cancer. Lord, we're still praying for those and families and friends and coworkers and um, associates, Lord, that are still lost. Lord, just give us ways, give us opportunities to share your word with them privately, that there will be no distractions. Lord, at, open up their hearts to um, want to seek you and who you are. Lord, I thank you for Brother McQuery. <laughs> what a blessing he is, and Lord, and um, I just love that man and his family so much and the work they're doing. Lord, I ask that you'll... Um, also heal him, and Lord, just help him get through what he needs to get through, and Lord, and I ask that you'll be with the people over in Turkey, and with the people that Brother McQuarrie's working with, I ask that you'll be with them, and we'll see many souls get saved. This is a time that sometimes these attacks will open up eyes and open up hearts to hear who you are, Lord. I just ask that you'll ha give us that chance and give those people those chances over there. And Lord, I ask that you'll be with these unreached people groups of China, in that part of the world, that's some of our most uh, populated areas in the world. Lord, I ask that you'll um, give us opportunity to share the gospel with them. And I just thank you for what you're doing with our ministry, too, and sharing the gospel in different parts of the world. Lord, I thank you for each and every one of these members. And actually, they're my family here in church tonight. Lord, I just ask that you'll be with them and help them. And I just thank you so much for who they are and what they believe in, Lord, I ask, just ask that you keep them strong, keep them standing firm upon your word. Lord, I just love you and I thank you. And be with the preacher as he preaches your word tonight. In Jesus Christ's name, amen.
Let's turn to 146, if you would. 146, angels from the realms of glory, wing your flight o'er all the earth. Would you stand with me as we sing? 146, on that first together. Angels from the realms of glory, wing your flight o'er all the earth. Ye who sang creation story, now proclaim Messiah's birth. Shepherds in the fields abiding, watching for your flock by night. God with man is now residing, yonder shines the infant light. Come and worship, come and worship. And greet one another. Make somebody feel welcome. We'll come back and sing that last stanza together. Sages, leave your contemplations, brighter visions beam afar. Seek the great desire of nations in the natal star. Come and worship, come and worship, worship. Let's sing that last together. Saints before the altar bending, watching long in hope and fear. Suddenly the Lord descending in his temple shall appear. Come and worship, come and worship.
seated. Ushers will come and they'll get our offering for this service and be prepared to give as God has blessed and prospered you. And remember our Christmas offering as part of the Sunday this Sunday. Uh, electric piano we're trying to get for our choir to practice with downstairs. And um, we're thankful that um, through the generosity of Orton Frontier, Brother uh, Bowman's organization there, they have uh, put the $200 in to help purchase the easel and such for the orphanage down in Honduras, and uh, we're grateful for that. And uh, so there's a few other items that I think if uh, we know they'd like to have to go with those products, and we're going to work on getting some of those as well. So uh, we uh, will still give some money towards that, and uh, but we sure appreciate their generosity in helping out with that project. That's a, that'll be a blessing to those kids down there, and blessing to those who are teaching those children, I'm sure. Uh, to have those helps. All right, let's pray for our offering tonight, shall we please? Father, we thank you for the privilege to give, and thank you, Lord, for how much you've given to us. And Father, I thank you for the faithfulness of the people whom you gathered in this place, Lord, the faithfulness to give to you, and uh, Lord, how you faithfully take care of our needs here. I uh, thank you for all the different ministries that you provided for us and that you take care of us here at Bible Baptist Church. And I pray once again you'll bless the giving of your people this evening. And we prayed in Jesus' name. Amen. Take your Bible this evening, if you would, please. And uh, two places, I want you to pick up Psalm 62, and then I want you to get 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Psalm 62, and then 1 Corinthians 15. We'll read the 62nd Psalm first. Uh, I should mention, pray for Sally. Uh, Sally's leaving tomorrow and heading up uh, just up north here a little bit in Ohio to see some family. And then on Friday, check this, Dean, would you? Doesn't sound quite right. Um, and then Friday, she's heading over towards Illinois, uh, the west side of Illinois. So uh, that's a long trip ahead of her. Uh, pray the weather will cooperate and uh, be nice and dry uh, for as she travels over there, and the Lord will give her safety. All right, and uh, remember her in prayer. I know she'll appreciate that. All right, Psalm 62. Truly my soul waiteth upon God. From him cometh my salvation. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be greatly moved. How long will ye imagine mischief against a man? Ye shall be slain, all of you. As a bowing wall shall ye be, and as a tottering fence. They only consult to cast him down from his excellency. They delight in lies. They bless with their mouth, but they curse inwardly. Selah. My soul, wait thou only upon God, for my expectation is from him. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. In God is my salvation and my glory, the rock of my strength, and my refuge is, is in God. Trust in Him at all times, ye people. Pour out your heart before Him. God is a refuge for us, Selah. Surely men of low degree are of vanity, 
and men of high degree are alive. To be laid in the balance, they are altogether lighter than vanity. Trust not in oppression, and become not vain in robbery. If riches increase, set not your heart upon them. God has spoken once, twice have I heard this, that power belongeth unto God. Also unto thee, O Lord, belongeth mercy, for thou renderest to every man according to his work. Now, I'm going to give you just a brief outline of that in a minute. Uh, Most of you are familiar with 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 58, where the Apostle Paul says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is never in vain in the Lord. Father, I bow before you now as we uh, come to the study of your word tonight, and Lord, I pray you'll help us to grab hold of the truth this evening as it is contained here in the passages we're going to look at, and Lord, I pray that uh, you would help us to fulfill the admonition that Paul gave to the Corinthian Christians to be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. So, Father, help us this evening and help me to, to be clear and to, to get the truth across and please give the people ears to hear what the Spirit would want to say to each of them this evening. May your will be done in these next few moments. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, we'll come to Psalm 62 in just a moment, but let me say a word about the 1 Corinthians uh, 15 passage. And most of you know 1 Corinthians, that the, all of 1 Corinthians is very is very corrective in nature. He's, he's fixing problems in the church. Uh, when you get into 1 Corinthians 15, you find out some of them were, uh, they, they got in a way in error. Uh, they, were, they weren't sure of the gospel anymore. And so he has to set up the gospel as the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Christ. Uh, they got messed up on the resurrection. And they weren't even sure if Christ has been raised from the dead. And so he has to talk about the resurrection again. And then, he talks about the return of Christ. That, uh, remember, Christ is going to come in a moment, in the, in, and he says uh, the, at the last trump, and, and he talks about the coming of Christ. And then he ends it by telling them, here's what you need. You need to be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. And, and the, word, the, the words there, uh, the, the steadfast means to be firmly fixed. You need to be firmly fixed in what you believe. Immovable means you cannot be moved from that place. So I settle down on what I believe. I say this is what I hold to, and you're not going to move me away from it. See, this is where I stand. And that's the. And by the way, when you're steadfast, when you're firmly fixed, when you're immovable, say I'm not budging from what I believe. You will abound in the work of the Lord. If you're wavering and you're tossed around you do not abound in the work of the Lord. And so, steadfast, immovable, you'll always abounding. Abounding means you'll always be prevailing. You'll always be winning in the work of the Lord. So, if that's true, and it is true, then I understand what Satan wants to do to you, what Satan wants to do to me is move us. Okay? Okay? He wants to move us off the path. He wants to move us from our position. He wants to move us away from the things we believe. And that's all he wants to do. Just get us off the path. Get us off course. And he desires to do that. Now, in Psalm 62, the the, the reason we put these two together, let me give you you the the breakdown of this psalm, all right? There's four divisions to it. The first four verses, David is speaking to his enemies. He's speaking to his enemies. In verses 5, 6, and 7, he's speaking to himself. He starts out in verse 5 saying, My soul, wait thou only on God. My expectation is from him. He's talking to himself. In verses 8 through 11, he's talking to his friends. He says, Trust in him at all times, ye people. Pour out your heart unto him, or before him. For God is a refuge for us. He's talking to his friends. And then in verse 12, he talks to the Lord. And he says, O Lord, unto you belongeth mercy, for thou renderest every man according to his work. But notice when David talks to his enemies, in verse number 2, he tells them that he, that's God, is my rock and my salvation. 
He is my defense. I shall not be, what's the last two words? Greatly moved. Okay? I won't be greatly moved. Hey, you may move me slightly, but it won't be greatly. I may move a little bit, but it won't be very much. But, but he's admitting that they could move him. That's interesting. Because when you go further and he begins to talk to himself in verse 5, and he tells his soul that wait upon God, that my expectation is from him. Verse 6, he, is, oh, he only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. Now he comes to that same phraseology again. I shall not be moved. Wait a minute, there's a word missing in there. Oh yeah, now he doesn't say greatly at all, does he? Now he takes that out. And by the way, he said, oh, it's just one word. That's a big word difference. When I say I won't be greatly moved and I will not be moved, there's a difference. One word makes a big difference. And now, as he, as he looks at the promises of God, as he talks about his fears, but he looks at the, 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 thinks about the Lord and reminds himself of what God has said, you know what he does? He becomes very confident of God's promises, and he says, you know what? I won't just be greatly moved. I shall not be moved. There's an old song that says, I shall not be, I shall not be moved. Anybody here remember that one? Oh, some of you do remember that one, huh? And uh, that's a, uh, we don't sing that much. It's in our book, though, and uh, we have to brush that one off, amen? And uh, we'll, we'll be steadfast, unmovable. Now, ask yourself this question. What would it take to move you away from Christ? You know, Paul, to write to the Galatians, and he, say, I'm, he said, I was surprised that you're so soon removed from him who called you unto another gospel. They got moved. And, hey, listen, everybody here tonight, probably, if you've been saved for any length of time, you know people tonight that have moved from where they once stood. They've moved from the path they were once on, and they're no longer on that path. And so they get, somehow they allow Satan to move them. They allowed other things to move them. We're going to talk about some of those things tonight. What would, it, what would it take to move you away from serving God? What would it take to move you away from being faithful to Him, from reading His Word anymore? What would it take to, to move you? Now, who or what seeks to move us? We've established the fact we're to be steadfast and what? Immovable. We're to be fixed, firmly fixed in what we believe and where we stand. And really, this comes into the, the warfare as well. Remember, uh, several times when we put on the armor of God, the, the, the command is that we stand. And having done all, stand. Stay firmly fixed on what you believe and where you are. Why? Because He just wants to move us. Okay? And that's the first, first number one you have for us. The one who wants to move us is Satan. Satan seeks to move us. Look at a scripture with me, will you, in, in 1 Chronicles 21. 1 Chronicles 21. Notice verse number 1. 1 Chronicles 21, verse 1. And Satan stood up against Israel and provoked David to number Israel. This, this is pretty plain, isn't it? Who caused David to number Israel? Yeah, Satan did. Now, you, you can, uh, in a, sometimes in other passages, it says David thought to do it. Well, David, David may have th thought he thought it, but who put that thought in David's head? That was Satan. And he was trying to get him to go against God. Now, the, their strength, God had told him, you don't have to number Israel. Why? Your strength is not in your numbers. Your strength is not in the number of soldiers you have. Your strength is not in your military might. Your strength is in God. Your defense is God. And, and so the, the, David was not supposed to do it, and he was moved. Notice, he provoked David, or he moved David to number Israel. And you know what? The results were disastrous. God judged that sin, and it was awful. And so the devil... Uh, desires to move us. Now, he does that several ways. Number one, he may try to get you to lead and get ahead of God. 
He may try to get you to just go off and do something, and then all of a sudden you say, well, God, you're coming, aren't you? Huh? Come on. Sometimes we can get great ideas, and by the way, they're not bad things. They're good things, but we're not after doing the good will. We're after doing God's will. And so something may be good, but it may not be what God wants us to do. There are, there are some good causes that people may want us to get involved in. Sometimes there's good ministries that people come and want us to get involved in. But you understand, we, we can't be involved in every ministry. It's impossible. We'd be spread out all over the place. And, though, and I'm not saying that those, that isn't a good ministry. I'm just saying somewhere we have to know this is what God wants us to do. And so oftentimes you can get ahead of God. How many of you be honest enough, you've been saved long enough, you would say there are times in your life when you've gotten ahead of God before and you did what you wanted and then you, know, then you realize God wasn't coming along <laughs> and you had to stop and say, I better wait on God. The, always in Scripture, it's wait on the Lord. And one thing I've learned through the years is God's never in a hurry. I am. But God never is. And so you wait on God. And so he'll try to get us to get ahead of the Lord or he'll go the other way and he'll try and get us to follow afar off like Peter did. We get farther away and we, we just kind of lag behind. When that happens, we become an easy target. You know, the sheep that stay back and they're the stragglers, they're the ones who can get picked off real easy by the enemy. That's what the, the, the lion will look for. The third thing Satan does, he tries to get us to simply forsake, forsake the master altogether. Throw in the towel. Forget it. I'm not going to follow Christ anymore. And tragically, there's people who do that as well. Now, the secret to that is sort of what we, we mentioned in Sunday when we talked about Peter in Luke 22. If you remember, we talked about how Peter got self-confident. Although everybody will forsake you, I won't. Have all these guys will deny you, not me. Man, I'm ready to go die with you, Lord. And boy, it wasn't that much longer where he's warming his hands at the fire and the little girl says, you're one of his. What are you talking about? I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know that guy. Wow. How confident he was. And listen, self-confidence is always present before you backslide. It's always present. Don't you get confident in yourself. Satan would love you to trust in your own strength. Satan, and, and, and it's subtle. Listen, it's subtle. You'll, you'll, you'll just go a day and you won't pray or you won't read your Bible. You'll leave off your disciplines and, and, you, and you won't do it. And you know what? The sky won't fall. You won't get in a wreck. Things will go pretty smooth. And you know what? You say, well, hey, I, that worked out okay. And all of a sudden you start thinking you can do it on your own. He's subtle. He's deceptive. So be, don't, don't rely on the flesh. The arm of flesh will fail you. You dare not trust your own. Self-confidence always leads to backsliding and disaster. But him that thinketh he standeth, take heed lest he fall. All right, so Satan seeks to move us. What else seeks to move us? Sin seeks to move us get us away off the path. Look at Acts chapter 7. Would you please, the book of Acts chapter 7. Acts 7, of course, is Stephen's sermon that he preaches. And he's going through a little bit of the history of Israel and he's talking about Joseph. He talks about Jacob, and Jacob, in verse 8, he talks about how he gave the covenant of circumcision. Abraham begat Isaac and circumcised him the eighth day. Isaac begat Jacob. Jacob begat the twelve patriarchs, and the patriarchs moved with envy, sold Joseph into Egypt, but God was with him. Now, wait a minute. Why did his brothers sell Joseph into Egypt? Envy envious they got jealous of him moved with envy where does where does envy and jealousy and anger where does all that begin 
Huh, yeah, it begins in our heart. All sin has its origin in our heart. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? And so it, 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 Jesus talked about the blasphemies and all the sins, and he says that comes from the heart of man. It comes from in. And so uh, it, it comes in our own heart. Now, people get moved. They get moved off the path. They get moved from their position. They get moved from their place, sometimes because of sin. It may be, it may be personal sin. Maybe personal sin. Sin in your own life that can take you off the path. Sin in your own life that will take you away from following Christ. We see that many times throughout the Bible. For David, it was lust. Bathsheba. And, and staying home from battle. For Abraham, it was lying. Hey, tell him you're my sister. Well, Abraham, that's not exactly the truth. Well, it's half truth. Well, half the truth is a lie, see? For Moses, it was a personal sin of temper. He was supposed to speak to the rock. He got so frustrated, he got angry, he smote the rock. He couldn't undo it. Couldn't undo it. Gehazi, the servant to Elijah, he, when he healed Naaman the leper of his leprosy, boy, he got greedy, didn't he? Hey, I think, I think we will take some of those suits of clothes, and I think we will take some of that gold. And he became a leper. could be personal sin. And personal sin will get you off the track. That's why, listen, uh, if you confess our sin, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Keep short accounts with God. Man, the moment God convicts you of sin, the moment he smites your heart, ask him to forgive you. Ask him to cleanse you. Don't, don't harbor that. Don't keep that. It'll move you off the path. Now, it can be personal sin. It could be people's sins. It might not be yours. It might be somebody else's. It may be somebody you looked up to, a Christian leader or another believer. Maybe they succumb to sin. How many people do you know that aren't in church or they're not serving God or not living for God because somebody they looked up to or somebody they respected sinned and they threw in the towel. They got upset because somebody else sinned, because of someone else's succumbing to temptation. Don't be moved by that. Hey, it doesn't matter who the person is. It doesn't matter who the leader is. It doesn't matter who the preacher is. It doesn't matter who the person is you're looking up to. I want to remind you, everybody is flesh. Everybody can fail. Everybody can, can sin. Don't put anybody in a pedestal that should belong only to Jesus Christ. There's nobody. Listen, if, if you quit serving God because somebody you look up to fell into sin, then you really weren't serving God. You were serving them. That doesn't, you know, just keep your eyes on Christ. Jesus is the only one who will never fail you. He's the only one who will never disappoint you. And so you have to keep your eyes on that. You be loyal to the leader as long as they're loyal to God. You follow the leader as long as they follow God. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not interested in, in everybody. Uh, you know, I, I'm, never, I'm never comfortable when, when I, don't, don't, don't hold me up, okay? I'm the pastor of the church. God put me in that position. But you know what? The day will come when uh, either I'll die or, or you know something will happen and I won't be here. But you know what? God will bring in another pastor. But you just keep serving God. That's, what that, that, that's the way it's supposed to be. And you know, you're not going to be saved many years. Let me ask you a question. Let's just show you some of these, some of these new Christians. How many of you have been saved for maybe 20 years or more and you've seen a Christian leader, you've seen somebody you had confidence in who sinned? And, and, and it disappointed you. Have you had that happen? All right. And yet you're still in church. You're still, still living for God. Still, you di didn't let that move you. You see, that's important. And, and the way you do that is you have to fix your eyes on Christ, not on other people. Follow them. Paul told the church at Corinth, same people, 
He said, you be followers of me as I follow Christ. If I'm, in other words, if I'm no longer following Christ, don't follow me. Right in this, my, my job, I think the pastor's job is to point you to Jesus Christ. I'm not trying to get you to follow me. I want you to follow me, but only as I follow Christ. And the one we're looking to is Jesus. And he's the author and finisher of our faith. And so keep following Christ. That way you won't be moved by other people's sins. Okay? So Satan seeks to move us. Number two, sin will seek to move us, either personal sin or other people's sin. Number three, 1 Thessalonians chapter 3. 1 Thessalonians chapter 3. Here's the third thing that will seek to move us. Afflictions. Afflictions. 1 Thessalonians chapter 3. Verse number 3. That no man should be moved by these afflictions. For yourselves know that we are appointed thereunto. Now these believers in Thessalonica were, were under great persecution, great persecution. Great pressure, okay? And as believers, they were, they were enduring some very difficult times. And they were, some were really having a hard time underneath the load and even some of the sorrow that they were experiencing. Affliction is a state of pain, distress, or grief. Affliction is a state of pain, distress, or grief. And I'm going to tell you something. Afflictions come to all of us. One of the lies of Satan is he gets in your shoulder and he gets in your head and he tells you nobody has it like you do. Nobody's going as hard as you've got it. This is just you, 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 you know, you know, you you've got it so bad, nobody and and and, and by the way, he does it this time of year especially. Christmas time is a is is so many people get depressed during the holidays. And that's just Satan. And, and, and he's, you're listening to his lies. Don't listen to those. those uh, everybody has afflictions. I, I have to just, I, there's times I just, I have to just be quiet because sometimes people will say, well, so-and-so, if I wish I had their life, or so-and-so, I wish I was like them. And, man, I know what they're going through. I know what they're dealing with. And I feel like saying, man, let me tell you what they're dealing with. If you knew what they were dealing with, you'd gladly keep your stuff. You wouldn't want their stuff. Uh, but I can't. I can't tell them that. But, but I'm telling you that, okay? Uh, you, you want your own afflictions, and don't let them move you. Look at Acts 20, would you please? Acts chapter 20. This is Paul as he talks to the Ephesian elders. He's getting ready to leave, and he's giving him his final discourse here. In verse 17, it says, From Miletus he sent to Ephesus, Acts, Acts 20 and verse 17, he sent to Ephesus, called the elders of the church. And when they were come to him, he said unto them, Ye know from the first day I came into Asia, after what manner I have been with you at all seasons, serving the Lord with all humility of mind, and with many tears and temptations, which befell me by the lying in wait of the Jews, and how I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you, but have showed you, and have taught you publicly and from house to house, testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks, repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. And now, behold, I go bound in the Spirit unto Jerusalem, not knowing the things that shall befall me there, save that the Holy Ghost witnesseth in every city, saying that bonds and afflictions abide me. But none of these things, none of these things, what? Move me. Neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. Paul had heading to Jerusalem and, and the Spirit of God. Had, in fact, in one place, the prophet Agabus took a, took like a girdle, and he bound the hands of Paul, and he's saying, that's what they're going to do to you. And, and he said, he didn't say, people are just telling me that. He's saying, the Holy Ghost has told me. I'm going to have bonds and afflictions when I get there. 
But that doesn't move me. That doesn't get me off my path. That's not moving me off the course. What does it take to get you to move? Hmm? Is, it, is it physical affliction? Is it, is it a mental or emotional affliction? What is it that, that affliction you'd have to go through for you to move away from God and move away from your position, move away from what you know is right? See, it could be physical affliction or emotional distress or grief. But Paul said, none of these things move me. And notice he said, so that I might finish my course with joy in the ministry which I received the Lord Jesus. Sounds to me like I'm just going to be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as I know that my labor is not in vain in the Lord. He's a living proof of that. And you would go to 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and read all the afflictions he went through in his ministry. And, and uh, I tell you what, when you read that, how are, you ever gonna, how are any of us ever going to look at a guy like him in the eyes when we get to heaven and tell him how tough we had it? Okay, Look, look there with me, will you? Let's look there. You're not, you're not going anywhere. It's early. 2 Corinthians 11. Look at this. Here's what Paul said. Verse 23 of chapter 11, 2 Corinthians. Or as some might say, 2 Corinthians. Verse 23, are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more. Here it is. In labors more abundant, in stripes above measure, in prisons more frequent, in deaths oft. Of the Jews, five times received I forty stripes, save one. Five times they beat him with a whip 39 times across his back. Thrice I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Thrice I suffered shipwreck. A night and a day I've been in the deep. In journeyings often, in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils by my own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, in weariness and, and painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness. Besides those things that are without, that which cometh upon me daily, the care of all the churches. Who's weak and I'm not weak? Who's offended and I burn not? If I must needs glory, I will glory of the things which concern mine infirmities. You say, Paul, yeah, you got to be kidding me. You don't really mean that. Oh, he said, verse 31, the God and Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, which is blessed forevermore, knoweth that I lie not. In case you don't want to believe him, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, he says, I want you to know I'm not lying about this. How are we going to look at somebody like him in the eye living in our 21st century Christianity and tell him how tough we had it? Well, Lord, you know, it was six degrees out one night when I went to church. There was, there was a patch of ice in the parking lot, and I just slipped, got slipped. Think about that. We, we, have, we, we think we have it so difficult. What? does it take to move you? We think we have a little pain or we have a little grief or a little suffering and then we're ready to toss in the towel. Well, I don't think I'll go to church tonight. I don't feel like reading my Bible today. How soon we can let afflictions move us. Be ye therefore steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. All right, we said number one, Satan seeks to move us. Number two, sin seeks to move us. Personal or other people's. Number three, afflictions seek to move us. You know, I thought about Ezekiel when it comes to afflictions. You remember the story when Ezekiel, uh, God, God, used, God used him for some illustrations to teach people. He did the, 
he had him put on the girdle, never wear it, not wash it. Then he had him take it off and go bury it. And, and he also had him, he said, your wife's going to die. And you're going to simply take her, bury her, you're going to get up. And, and at evening his wife died, in the morning he got up and did what God told him to do. No mourning, no sackcloth and ashes. He just had to keep going. See, he, he, he wasn't going to let anything move him. He was going to do exactly what the Lord commanded him to do. What do you do when you're afflicted? What do you do when you're in pain? What do you do when you don't feel like, you know what you do? You do exactly as God commanded you to do. It didn't, God never said, if you, if you love me, obey my commandments if you feel like it. No, just obey my commandments. And God promises grace. Grace is the favorable influence of God. God's favor, God's help to us, God's sufficiency comes to us when we battle affliction. To Israel in Deuteronomy, he told them, he said, as they're getting ready to, to, to go towards the promised land, you know what promise he gave them? As thy days, so shall thy strength be. That's an interesting verse. Because he's saying, hey, listen, what comes first, the day or the strength? The day does. Then God sends the strength to deal with what you've got to deal with that day. Have you, ever, have you ever looked at someone that maybe had a special needs child or maybe they had a, a situation where they're caring for a, a mate or caring for a spouse who's been injured and, and, and they're trying to take care of them? And you know, you ever looked at someone who had a special situation like that and said, I don't know how they do it. I don't know how they do that. I don't, I don't, and, and sometimes we say, I don't think I could do that. And you know why you don't think you could? Because God hasn't given you the grace to deal with that situation like he gives them. When you're in, when you get to that situation, God will give you the grace to do it. But you don't get the grace ahead of time. Okay? It, as thy days, so shall thy strength be. Okay? The day comes, then God gives the strength for you to bear the burden of the day. All right? Let's go to number four. Number four is friends will seek to move us. Friends will seek to move us. 2 Timothy chapter 4. 2 Timothy chapter 4. Most of you are familiar with this verse. Verse number 10. 2 Timothy 4 and verse 10. For Demas hath forsaken me, having loved this present world, and is departed unto Thessalonica, Crescens to Galatia, Titus, unto Dalmatia. Verse 16. At my first answer, no man stood with me, but all men forsook me. I pray God that it may not be laid to their charge. Demas left Paul. Others left him as well. In fact, he says, at my first answer, I didn't have anybody with me. You know, Paul always traveled with an entourage. He had a group of men that, that went with him anywhere he went. And finally, he, he, when, he, when he gets arrested and he has to stand before the magistrate to give an account, he looks around and guess what? Huh. Nobody's there but him. They all left him. They were moved. Some were greatly moved, like Demas. And they forsook him completely. You know, Sometimes even your friends can cause you to move. The, what, about, what about David's mighty men, especially the uh, Joab and the Abishai's, the, 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 his sister's sons who were closest to him? Several times when he had opportunity, Saul was there. What were they telling him to do to Saul? Kill him. Now if your chance. In fact, one of them said, I'll, I'll take care of it, and I won't have to do it twice. I won't have to hit him twice. One, one time is all I need. This is it. Oh, and if he'd have listened to his friends, he'd have gotten, he'd have done just what we said earlier. He got way ahead of God and would have thwarted God's plan for him. Be careful about your friends. Even, even Jesus' friends would have had him stay away from Jerusalem. And not have him go. But that's what he came to do. He came to die. He came to do God's will for his life. 
your, uh, I'm saying this, your steadfastness and your immovability, it cannot depend on your friends. It cannot depend on your friends. David said this, Psalm 16 and verse 8, I have set the Lord always before me, because he is at my right hand, I shall, can you finish it? Not be moved. Because he's at my right hand, I shall not be moved. It's always setting the Lord before you that you won't be moved. There are, I've lived long enough now to see institutions change. Institutions that, I, that were solid, good institutions 30 years ago that are not solid, good institutions today. I've watched men who I knew 30 years ago who believed the book, had right positions according to the Bible, were Baptist, who today would not use a King James Bible, would not be a Baptist, and they've moved. They've moved. You see, and, and if I just had my eyes on my friends, I would have moved too. I would have moved too. But you have to set the Lord always before you. When you set the Lord before you, listen, I am the Lord thy God. I change not. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. You won't change. You'll stay with him. That's always abounding. Earthly friends may prove untrue, but Jesus never fails. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. Decide to be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Don't let Satan move you. Don't let sin move you. Don't let afflictions move you. Don't let friends move you. You know, people are drawn to things that do not change. The Grand Canyon. Okay? Old Faithful. The Statue of Liberty. Some of the, some of the sites around Washington, D.C., you go there because you know what to expect. You know what you're going to see. It's, it doesn't change. I believe, I believe people are still drawn to things that don't change. I believe that. I think we need to, to, to be steadfast, unmovable. I think people will be drawn to Christians that don't change. I believe they'll be drawn to churches that don't change. I can't tell you. How many times folks, folks have come and I, or we talk to people who uh, are our mailman and, and some other people at stores and you talk to them about coming to church and you tell them that, and listen, we still sing out of the hymn book. And, we still, and they say, oh man, we, I, I want a church like that. I'm tired of this stuff, other stuff that they have. And they're out there just looking for somebody who, who just hasn't changed. When they go to church, they feel like they went to church. That's not change. Be therefore steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is never in vain in the Lord. Let's stand together for prayer, shall we? Father, thank you for this evening. Thank you, Lord, for the admonition from Paul under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit that we be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as we know our labor is not in vain in the Lord. And Lord, I pray that you'd keep us, that we would set the Lord always before us. And the Lord, we would understand that rising in the morning and spending our time with you, if it accomplishes nothing else, it keeps us from being moved. It just keeps us fastened where we belong and fixed in our place. Lord, I pray that we would be like Isaiah said, we'd just be like nails fastened in a sure place. We would be
be steadfast and immovable. And know, Lord, that our labor is never in vain in you. Thank you that you'll take care of us and you'll bless our labor as we labor with you in your work. Thank you again, Lord, for each one that was here this evening. Thank you for their faithfulness. Now, Lord, dismiss us with your care. Give us safety as we travel the roads home. Make us mindful you go with us and help us to point others to Christ this week. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I'm pressing on the upward way. Only a couple more weeks to sing this, and we'll move on to a new theme in 2017. And, uh, and we'll reveal that on January 1st, that Sunday evening. Give you the theme for the next year, okay? Let's sing Higher Ground. I'm pressing on. I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day. Still praying as I'm onward bound. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand. By faith on heaven's table land, a higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. God bless you. You're dismissed. Choir, come right.